everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome and Happy New Year. Uh, today, uh, Sharon brought up a very good point, and that is I use the term energetic coherence a lot. And, and she pointed out that there might be some people who are not really clear on what I mean by that. And so I'd like to take some time here to get into that and maybe explore some of the assumptions that are about it and a description of also some of the possibilities that come with the idea of energetic coherence. So the first thing to, to coherence just means that how much do things stick together? How much do they do they form into a state of wholeness, right? So that that instead of being scattered all over the place, things cohere. That is, they form into a, a, a wholeness of something. And when we talk about coherence in terms of energy, that means that, that there is, uh, that the energy is moving in a, in a certain direction uh, and, and that it has a, there's a harmony uh, a quality of of um, uh, togetherness that 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 comes with it. That things are cooperating nicely. There's a there's an uh, an efficiency, and it is a an insubstantial. That is a, a that that is a, the the quality of of not being hard or solid. It's it's kind of invisible, but it's part of the a reflection of the more substantial or solid part of of whatever it is we're describing so whenever things are coming along at a very high level of efficiency there is a quality to the energy that is associated with that that feels very uh harmonious and whenever things are are disjointed and they are uh, not functioning well, then the energy will have a tendency to be fragmented. And so this, we're talking about an energetic coherence. We're always talking about the degree of, of cooperation, harmony that's within the system, whatever that system may be, be it a car engine or a human body, that you have this, how much is it humming along with a minimum of noise. And so if you think of your body mind as, as being uh, at a substantial level, it's composed of you know trillions of cells, maybe between 50 and 100 trillion cells, depending on, on your body mass. And so each of those has its own energy. Each of those cells has its own energy. It's a little dynamo of, of energy production and there is a, across the cell wall, there is a, a substantial amount of uh, electricity. There's a, an electrical field that makes, uh, that shows the difference between inside the cell and outside the cell. Anyway, each of these, each of these cells has its own little field and to get them, everybody working together at a high level of efficiency is quite miraculous. And that's who we are. So the very fact that you're alive means that you have a high level of coherence. So when we talk about getting coherent or getting more coherent, we're saying, yeah, that's our baseline. We're alive. Now what? We can do better than that. And if we can get the things working even more efficiently, then energetic coherence expands. It, it, it moves to a higher, more refined state. And so uh, when we think of it as like there's the, the, the noise that is generated by things banging into each other, that is an inefficient system, you know, it is dissipating. The noise is going away as we get more and more into this state of coherence. And the, um, you know, we, we talk about the sweet spot. And this is, a, this is a, another way of talking about coherence. It's like there's a, a feeling that's associated 
when things are working well, when things are humming along together and they're they're working very well. So that's a, that means that everything is operating at a, at a higher level of efficiency, which then translates into in your body and your mind, it's a state of a heightened state of ability with your body and also a clearer mind, a clearer, calmer mind that because things are not, there's not as much clacking going on there. And we've talked a lot lately about the, um, you know, getting the brain to to move into a, a state of hemispheric synchronization. That is when both the uh, the two hemispheres of the brain start to do a little dance together so that they are functioning at, as, as one unit, which is very different than the way most of us are wired, which is where the left side and the right side don't know what the, uh, the other is doing. So if we can move that into that heightened state of resonance between the two hemispheres, then we have a heightened state of brain coherence. We have a whole brain coherence, which is also on this spectrum of how how coherent and so there is pretty much uh we don't know what the top is we don't know how how far we can go with this we know that things can get uh can get uh very ugly on, on the on the bottom end of it where things are really disjointed and and there's a lot of unhappiness and 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 frustration and and destruction that comes when things are are non-coherent but if we get things on in a highly coherent state that it opens the doors to new possibilities so we don't actually know how high we can go as as humans so that's uh that allows us to move curiously forward and kind of explore what else is possible on that so the uh, when I talk about getting coherent, the, the simple thing that I have discussed many times is, you know, if you point and reach with your index fingers, one or both of them, then you're bringing your conscious awareness to actually feeling your your body. So in doing that, you're activating and accessing your uh, your sensory neural network, that is you know, the, the nerves that are that feel things, and that connects you up in a way that you ordinarily are unconscious of. You're not, you know, as you don't notice the parts of your body unless you notice them. And the um, whenever you do that with your index finger, it has a very special relationship with your nervous system, and it immediately creates this state of heightened coherence throughout the whole system, which is kind of cool. And it's not the only way to get coherent and get more coherent. You can do it by feeling anything. It just happens to be a real uh, easy entry point for that. And it's something that if you just remember that one thing, you can immediately make a shift. And you know, within a fraction of a second, you can shift into a heightened state of coherence. And then you can, starting with that, you can then take that higher, 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 depending on how far you want to go into, into that state of coherence. And the um, question is, you know, it comes up is like, well, is, is it possible to do too much? And uh, uh, the answer is yes, you can, you can be more, into that state then uh, is necessary for the circumstances you're in. So in Tai Chi Chuan, we talk about you want to find the energy that is appropriate for the situation you're in. You find out how much coherence is right for the situation you're in. Because you can get so into it that it becomes the goal, the the coherence itself becomes the thing you're seeking. So you're going higher, higher, higher into this bliss state, but it that may be not what you want to do if you need to shovel your sidewalk or 
you um, have to pick up the kids at, uh, at nursery school. You, you want to get just coherent enough to be able to handle the circumstances you're in. So the, uh, we, we do that with the, with the index fingers. We feel that, and that, that enables us to move quickly into that state, and at which point you can access any other parts of your body and crank it up even more and you can find exactly the right amount for whatever it is you're doing. So the uh, we talk about energetic coherence. We talk about enhancing your state to find what is appropriate for the moment you're in. What is how much are you willing to cohere? That is, become whole in that moment. And to be able to interact with your environment in a way that is that is appropriate for what it is you want to do. And so we got uh, uh, it's it's a tool that enables us to you know to explore all kinds of possibilities at that point. So anyway, let's uh, let's see if there's any uh, comments, questions. Did I leave anything out, guys? Can you uh, can you help me out here? Scott. Um, you had talked about that we generate a field when we are energetically coherent. Can you talk about that? Can you talk about the field and how that affects other things? Sure, sure. That uh, um, Your body mind has a field, has a, a number of fields. Your brain has a field. Your heart has a field. Um, Every cell has a field that uh, uh, an energetic field that is uh, uh, is at some levels is measurable. Say the electrical field that is generated by each cell is a measurable thing. The electrical field that's generated by your heart is an easily measurable thing. Uh, that by your brain, things like that. We have uh, EEGs, EKGs, things like that. That actually can monitor your electrical field. But the chi is not limited to electromagnetism. It goes, it expands in all directions. That just happens to be the densest energies that we are into measuring at this point. And I don't know uh, how far we can get machines to help us out with this, but it's something that we as martial artists and energy healers and whatnot, we could uh, we can attune to those subtle energies, which um, are not easily recognizable in any mechanistic fashion. So those fields, whenever we get coherent, we are taking all those individual fields, and where ordinarily you have two or more systems operating uh, in concert together, there is going to be some noise. That is, the some of the energy is going to cancel out the other because they're not resonating together. So you know, we, we call that uh, destructive interference. That is, it's like whenever the a wave is coming up on, uh, from the, an ocean wave is coming up, it goes up the beach and it comes back down and as it's coming back down, it meets an incoming wave and the two clash and they cancel each other out. And a similar thing happens with the energy in your body. So a lot of times your energy is canceled by other energies in your body. And whenever we get highly coherent, things tend to move together in concert. So we, when that happens, we generate more of a a coherent field, which uh, as we cultivate that, as we learn to get more and more coherent, that becomes more and more pronounced and you start to create this field which projects out from your body. In, um, in uh, Taiji, it's called the, the Wei Qi, your external Qi. And that is, it's, it's like a, a force field that that you, by cranking up your coherence at a higher and higher level, 
you're able to project this field, which you know is said to ward off pernicious influences. That is, it is it acts like a force field which eliminates a lot of the the uh, the illnesses that you might otherwise get because you're you've got this robust chi that is projecting outward. So, uh, and you know, we all have experiences of meeting people who have such presence, such a field that that you know, like whoa, there's there, there's a lot there, and it can be negative too. It can be like someone who has like a really really big but nasty field, and you can like yeah, you know. You, you back away slowly and uh, let's get out of here. So there's a, um, uh, it's not necessarily good or bad. It just means that it's functioning together. So does, does that, uh, does that clarify that? Is that uh, good? Okay. Uh, anybody else? Any, anything else that I, anything else I missed there? No. Yeah. Valerie. There's nothing that you missed. Um... It, just to me, an example of what you're talking about, especially field, is if uh, you're in a group and you're doing a form together um, and how it may start off a little funky because everybody's just kind of settling in. And then as the form progresses, you know, through time, uh, whether that be five minutes, 10 minutes, things change. And... <clears throat> the way I would imagine that you're talking about cells, how when they start moving together, it's like when the group starts moving together, um, it's palpable. You can feel it. And when you, you know, come to the end and everybody, it's not necessarily everybody all the time, but most of the time there's that feeling of coherence of you're together in this thing that you've just created. and People feel it, and that's why people keep doing it in groups because of that energy that we create and moving together. Zach. That, that's a great point. That's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah, it's a, you know, a, a lot of times I'll get uh, students will say, you know, yeah, I don't get the same feeling when I'm doing this at home by myself as I do in this class, you know, because you know, immediately you go into that class and it's like, whoa. You know the the group spirit is lifting everybody, and so there's this this sense of common, uh, a shared uh, uh, enthusiasm and and coherence that comes with that. Yeah. Well, you say sometimes that we become coherence exporting systems. Yeah. And is that what's going on there? Yeah, yeah. We talked about you know a, a phrase I, I I coined for it was like coherence exporting systems. That is whenever you get so coherent yourself that you are projecting it outward into the world and you are resonating with other people and your your coherence is affecting other people and so and we all have had experiences of people that can do that it just whenever they come around you just feel better and things go better whenever they're there and and it it brings a sense of community or order into the uh, into the group. So there's um, uh, uh, yeah. So that 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 coherence exporting idea is just that we we're able to project that field outward. And another thought. Yeah. And that's about when you do push hands. Uh, as, as I've been told that you don't push where they are strong. You push where they are not or where they are weak. So is that more of like if you can sense where a per your partner is not coherent, that that's your window to affect them? Yes, that's, that's a good, good point. Yeah. So that, that's a good point. So when, in push hands, whenever, you know, you learn to sense where the there's a, a non-coherence in the system or where you can create a non-coherence in the system. And so then you you can then use that as an entry point to uh, to create a uh, uh, an advantage if you're if you're playing in a competitive fashion with uh, with push hands. And that same true sparring or whatever. You're learning to to be able to recognize where there is 
a a weakness in the uh, in the coherence where things fall apart. So, uh, uh, anybody else? Any other thoughts on this? Yeah, Sharon. Yeah, uh, kind of the the flip side of what uh, Valerie was saying. I think that when I'm I'm playing by myself, um, and I'll go back. I really appreciate your description of being harmonious um because when i'm when i'm by myself and i'm not challenged by being in a classroom and trying to do what everybody else is doing um left by myself i can connect more with the subtler energies and i don't get so tied into gross manifestation sometimes mm -hmm. that can be attributed to energetic coherence you know it's not the zinging in the hands or the body so much it becomes something else when i'm just in this quieter place okay yeah oh well, that, that that's uh you're absolutely right uh, so it goes back to what's appropriate for the situation yeah you know, it's like, you know, what, what is, what energy is appropriate for me right now, you know, and sometimes being in a big class is not the appropriate energy. Sometimes it's, it's, it's better, as you say, whenever you're just quietly doing your form by yourself. And uh, I, I guess the, there's something to be said too there. If you are with a group that is highly non-coherent, and you are yourself coherent, then it can be that can be noise which will drag you down. Mm -hmm. You know, and even as much as coherence you can export, you may not have enough to to lift everybody else up. And so there's uh, there's that too. So there's it's a uh, it's just a way of talking about how well are things working together and what is the energy that accompanies that harmonious interplay of various parts. Yeah, Richard. Um, I, I just like to sort of say what I'm, what's running around in my head. Um, when we talk about let's get coherent or, but you know, we sort of do that occasionally. Right. What I think of is that the first thing that, the first thought that I have is quiet. Um, and I think that quiet for me is relaxing, sun qua. And then after quiet, I think of organization. And then after organization, I think of expression. So for me, it's a cycle that um, that goes that goes through those phases, the mm -hmm. goal of which, is to be able to organize my own energy so that I can um, express it. And uh, so for me, there's a, there's kind of a cycle. Now, it's don't be uh, don't be misled by the fact that this is a long process because the process can happen almost instantly. And I mm -hmm. suppose that's what we're working toward. We're working toward being able to quiet, organize, and express um, pretty almost, I guess, almost naturally. Um, but that's the way I think of, I think of that as a, as a process. And the process is like the organization of energy that creates a laser, um, bringing all the chaos into a very focused beam. Um, so that's what it's it doesn't go through my mind as much as it used to because I think it does happen more uh, it does sort of happen more naturally and um, well not more more um, efficiently for me. Uh, well, it's a really good description you gave there, you know that. Uh, uh... I think that, that that's a really helpful way of thinking about it. You know, and the better the the better organized I can be, the more efficient my expression 
of energy can be. Right, right. And so the uh, we're talking about quieting. Uh, are you talking about quieting the noises in your mind so that you can bring your attention to focus? Is that, uh, that, that, that well, I... That that would be that would be great if that's what i was thinking but mostly i'm just thinking mostly i'm just thinking relax okay take the tension out of the system that that's good i think it, the effect of that is what i just said there that is as you relax you're going to you know start to let go of some of the the oppositional thinking that is creating some uh, noise in the yes, system that- yeah, that's that's the that's the hope exactly yeah so that, and that allows you to then organize and you say okay now that we got everybody quieted down uh, now how can we organize this in, in to move in the direction we want to go so it's like uh, you get a, a a class of unruly third graders and first thing you do is you make sure all right everybody take your seat and shut up you know, and and then, okay, now we're going to organize. We're going to open your books to chapter three. You know, and uh, and then we kind of move on from there. And that's uh, uh, falls on, and then it's expression. It's like, okay, now what did you learn from chapter three? Whatever, yeah, that uh, along those lines. And so that's, that's I think it's a good way of of, of approaching it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, everybody, let's sit still first. This is yeah right. <laughs> if spitballs are flying, we're not going to get much done here. So that uh, uh, yeah, we we calm 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 things down enough to be able to 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 focus and organize. So that's that, that's that's a, that's a good a, a description there. And I was also thinking that um, I think in the past I've been prone to think that it starts with pointing, but it doesn't start with pointing. You just don't notice that before you point, you have to quiet. Right, right. There's an intention to point. Right. You have to. You have to decide to point before you can point. So right. it, you you have to be able to focus enough to be able to to do that. But if you've already established, and this gets back to the other point you were making, that is, you know, it becomes almost natural. That is, if you do it thousands of times, then there's much less ramp up needed to reach with your fingers. If you have already decided that the first order of business, as I've, I've, I've preached often is, you know, first order of business is get more coherent, you know? And so whatever the circumstances is, if that's where you say, okay, I don't have to think about what I'm going to do right now. I know that, that that's, that's the first thing I'm going to decide to point my finger and I'm going to do it. And right. boom. And then, then things calm down. You can organize and then express, as you said. I like that. That's very good. Thank you. Yeah, good. Okay, anybody else? Scott? Well, I don't know if you want to get into this right now, but um, is so when you're talking about that, when you're talking about energetic coherence, is that the same as being in a flow state? No. No, flow state is, is is something very distinct. And uh 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 although when one is in a flow state, one is tends to be more coherent, but they're two separate two separate things. A flow state, you know, as um uh, uh the the guy who coined the term uh, uh Mihai Shishan Mihai is uh a uh, psychologist, and he was did a study in, uh, about. Actually, it was a global study. He, he got thousands of people around the world to to uh, describe what was happening whenever they're at this at this point of like peak experience that they where their things are just moving along, and and you're you're so uh, into what you're doing that your sense of time and space and identity all kind of gets gets fuzzed up because you're really just into into the action 
And he said that what it happens whenever we push beyond, we stress the system just beyond what's comfortable so that we derive pleasure in rising to the occasion to be able to handle the all this um, novelty around us and be able to handle it because we are, we have, we're beyond the point we're able to uh, uh, predict everything that's going on and we're not so, so deep into it that we can't predict anything. And so there's a sweet spot there between where you are being, and you're encountering a lot of novelty in, 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 in the moment, but you have a confidence based on your experience that you can deal with that. And so you enter into this flow state. And something that he, uh, you know, he had, uh, uh, he was checking on people all around the world with this, uh, with a, a buzzer system there, not a buzzer, a, a, what do you call those things, uh, a pager, you know, and he'd have people, you know, tuned in and, and, and what, what are you doing now? And how does that feel? And, and so he was able to gather them get information not as memories of what happened but while they're doing it and and uh so he was able to get people get some feedback from from people and he, he came up this idea of flow being where you are you're involved in a project where you have the you have a high level of ability and you're meeting challenges which are just a little bit beyond that so that you're constantly having to come up with new solutions you're creating something new in that and, you know, as you, as you mentioned there, it's like when you're doing that, you're in a highly coherent state. That is your, your, your mind is clear. Your, your, you don't have to think about as much about how you're going to get things done because it just happens. And there are different levels of flow state, you know, and in, in, in sports, we talk about being in the zone where, you know, things are just happening so fast and, you don't have time to reflect on them. They're just, just happening. I know in push hands, it's, it's something that can be recreated. If you raise your, the level of say competition, just beyond you know, where you're comfortable and you have to constantly be in the, in the present moment to be able to, to deal with the, the unexpected that's coming in there. And you have, a quarter of a second or less to uh, to respond to something that's going on. So there is no time to think about it. You're just you're moving into that super conscious state where you can you can you can handle things very quickly. Uh, these are all great que great question, great comments. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, anything else before we uh, uh, move on to other things? Okay, thank you. So uh, let's uh, let's talk about um, something we can move right into an activity. And that is, we're in the most yin part of the year. This is the uh, water element. Is where kidney energy is is dominant. This is uh, the 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 winter and. Uh, so what we want to do at this time is to really cultivate our the yin qualities in the uh, in our bodies, so we're able to uh, to create a fertile ground for the rest of the year, so that we really feel into the yin, nourish our kidney energy, so that in a couple of months we move into the uh, move into wood and we start to going from yin to yang and things start to to expand and this process goes on throughout the year where we go by the seasons so what i'd like to do is to um without a lot more talking i'd like to to really get into a the yin uh aspects of some stuff that you know fairly simple movements but with the emphasis less on what are we doing, but more on the feeling of, of letting go. So the idea of the yin is that 
the energy is moving kind of down. Your body gets very heavy, very dense, and the energy is moving down. So there always will be some yang there. And we're going to particularly focus on reaching with the, the crown of the head as we do that and tucking in the chin and opening the jade pillow gate as we as we do that and to keep that that the head position so that we're we're activating the uh, the upper dantian the brain as we're going through these things and everything else is kind of moving down so let's uh, stand up and um, let's do some stuff Okay, let's first let's get the uh, start off with the three pillars and uh, feel the balls of your feet. Knees are unlocked. And reach for the crown of your head, tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate. Just very gently push away from the earth and then. Ah, settle down in as if you're like really sinking into the earth. You really want to feel the density of your body. You want to feel the attraction of the earth. So we're opening up to the yin chi of the earth as we do this. Simultaneously, we're reaching up with the crown. But if you think of it in terms of percentages, we want to have about 80% down and 20% up. So we're kind of dangling from that, that crown, reaching up with the crown of the head. And as we do that, we're opening the, the, the neck, lengthening that, lengthening the spine. Point and reach with your index fingers and feel the energetic coherence throughout the whole body mind. Feel that immediate response as all the fields in your body start to reverberate together. They're sorting it out right now, but they're moving in the direction of a heightened state of harmony and coherence. And then turn gently, releasing at the qua. Yeah. Rotate your palms out and Arch your back, reaching with the crown so you're lengthening your spine and you're gently lengthening the, the spine, opening the space between the vertebrae as you open. Open your throat, your chest, your shoulders. Reach with your hands opening the joints. Feel the, the density of your body sinking down and allow that energy to come in. That yin energy of the earth. And then straighten up, come back, and rotate your palms back. Reach for the crown, tuck in the chin. Sink into the palm, the ball, the balls of your feet.
And feel that yang expansion. And then sink into your heels, maintaining your central equilibrium. Allow, allow your body to relax in stages as it goes down, down, down. You can start to feel different muscles which have been contracting, tensed up at a pre-conscious level. And so you're saying, what can I let go? In your butt, in your back, your chest, your abdomen. Feel that sinking down, down. Open at the bubbling well points in the center of your foot, kidney one points. And feel the exchange that is occurring there. We're connecting up the bai hui at the, at the top of the head. By reaching up with the crown, we're activating this point right here at the, at the center of the top of the head. And connecting up to the yang chi of the heavens as we do that. There's still an 80% into the, into the yin. 80% down, down, down. And just each, each time you take a breath, feel yourself sinking a little deeper, letting go of something else. Yeah. Now sink into the balls of your feet. Very slowly, reach with your wrists, relax your arms, relax your shoulders. Feel your arms being pulled up, but at the same time, you feel the weight of them as if they want to go down. And bring them up that chest height. And just feel that density there of your arms. Feel the heaviness. And reach with the fingers. Now sink into your heels. Open between your shoulder blades, feel your spine. Open the shoulder blades, open your shoulders. The shoulder joints, feel that space in the shoulder joints. Reach with your elbows, open that. Open your elbows, open the wrists, open the fingers. Think of your heels, feel down, down, down. Reach with the crown, tuck in the chin. Feel the yin chi going to your brain, your upper dantian. Now reach with your elbows and separate very slowly. Separate your hands. Elbows are reaching out ever so slowly. Shoulders are very relaxed. Arms very relaxed. Take at your heels, really feel the yin. Hands come down, sink.
Just feel into that. Feel the density. Feel the energy flowing down through your feet, down through the bubbling well, into the earth. Feel the earth chi rising, filling, filling you that very dense energy. As you breathe, feel into your lower dantian. That is your lower, your lower abdomen, the area below your navel, down to your perineum, from the front to the back, that whole area. Breathe into that. Feel your diaphragm pressing down on your internal organs as you're sinking in. Each time you exhale, feel yourself sinking a little deeper, a little, a little more relaxed. And step in. And take a deep breath. Hands come up very slowly, feel. Feel the yang expansion, up, opening, and sink into your heels and disappear the chi. Let it all go. Let your mind go and just feel into a state of pure being. Take a seat, please. Jonathan, you're on mute. You're on mute. There we go. Yes? Yes. I'm on my cell phone because I have better connection. Oh, okay. It, it's so, coming much better. Okay. So I, I wonder if others can join me in experimenting with just how profound, because you've, you've got me in you and I have been doing this for the last two weeks of just what this means when we press in the chin, the chin. It, it seems like such a simple little thing. Oh yeah, just a little adjustment, but it breaks up everything in the upper back. And it's like, it's, 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 and this isn't so much a relaxation as a, as a real movement. You know, we're, we're reaching, we're doing, we're not sinking into the sky, right? We're actually kind of a doing upward which is diff like a polarity with the sinking downwards, but it's it kind of begins with this groundbreaking in the upper back that for what happens when you tuck your chin in. I, I just trying to point out that for me, it has been a profound and, and dramatic shift in where my body is. And it's that the simplest little movement we've ever do besides pointing, just tuck your chin in. It's a lot more than that is what I'm, what I'm finding. 
Thank you. That's that that perfect, eloquently stated. It is profound. And uh, hold on one sec. Let me get rid of this. Yeah, it is profound, and it 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 gets more profound <laughs> every day for me. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, yeah. Richard. Uh, Jonathan, since since we've been sort of focusing on this for well quite a while now, and I do it, I'm trying to do it pretty much constantly during the day. My posture is much uh, much better aligned. Uh, yes, and tremendous. You feel it instantly, right? The way the back instantly, and it, you're just tucking in the chin, but it's the back that's taking the the, the reaction of that. Right. And that immediately starts to I just can't sustain it because, like, it, I'm in a different state of being. Who is this guy now? You know what I mean? <laughs> I own that power. It's like maybe I need to see a therapist and do it and say, can you help me sustain how I'm feeling when I'm like this? You know, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> uh, Sharon. <laughs> yeah. well, well, Jonathan. That's exactly what I noticed today is and the relaxation that came about in my shoulders and upper back. It made me feel like my arms length really lengthened. Yes. Mm. Yes. You know. Mm. Yeah. You're terrific. Beautiful. <laughs> Scott. Um uh, yeah, as to what Jonathan was asking, yeah. I've been doing it and when I do it, it is profound. And not just my shoulders, but everything seems to line up. Everything. Mm -hmm. It's it's just a uh, yeah. It's like yeah. It's everything seems to line up, and then like the pain of holding things goes away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really. Mm -hmm. yep. Beautiful, beautiful. It um, it's something that. Uh, I used to think it was like a modern phenomenon that we've we've all become this hunched over bunch of chin jutting humans, but the the, the um, injunction to to do this, the the uh, prescription to do this, is is at least a century old, and, and probably lo much older than that, probably going back centuries. So is this this is a human thing? It's not just it's not just happening to uh, 21st century humans this is this has been around for a long time this this problem the humans have had of 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 you know collapsing their posture and the idea of of reaching with the crown and and opening up the uh, the jade pillow gate is something that uh, has been around you know for at least 100 years probably a lot longer Actually, 150, I think it's uh, at least. So, yeah, it's just been around. So, yeah, great. Well, thank you all so much. It's been terrific. Appreciate your your help on this. And uh, thank you, Sharon, for bringing up that uh, idea about the energetic coherence, because that uh, that's, that's something that is definitely worth talking about every now and then, because it, uh, it's something that, you know, we're getting new people all the time onto the channel. And so it's good to, good to get people up to speed and explore the possibilities inherent in it. Great. Thank you. Love you all so much. Thank you, Maria. 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 Thank you, Maria.